No, we are maintaining course to stay away from the coast. With incorrect altitude information being transmitted from the aircraft to the tower, they do not know that the plane is descending. Your distance is 30 miles. Do you want a heading to proceed to the localizer, correct? Correct. We are going to suggest course north 360. 360. We have problems here reading the instruments. You're going to have to help me with altitudes and air speeds if it is possible. OK, received. Let's go. The approach is set. The 757's computers send critical warnings, information that the pilots are trained to obey but cannot trust. Let's try to make a descent on this heading. It's climbing. The airspeed plummets to below stall speed and then races up again. Let's go down to 10,000 feet. Why does the speed go away so fast? Could it be the real speed? That's what worries me. No, I don't think so. Can you verify our speed, please? 320 is indicated. We have 350, but the no. The engines are on idle, but we keep accelerating and accelerating. OK, received. Nerves are now stretched tight. You can imagine the pilots, they're flying there. They don't have a true indication of the speed. They're obviously trying to fly the airplane and changing the attitude up and down. That in itself will change an indication of airspeed, although it was incorrect. Both pilots were really confused. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to act. And they did uh, unhuman uh, efforts to save the aircraft. But, uh, I mean, they, they were really tired and uh, of all the work and all the confusion and all the alarms. Fernandez suggests that they try the speed brakes used to rapidly slow the aircraft. Extend the speed brakes. For a moment, it appears to be working. Then, another warning. All three indicators are fine on speed, fine on sp Over speed. Overspeed means the plane is flying too fast. The pilots cannot believe it, but the warning adds to their confusion. They are forced to choose, speed up or slow down. The lives of 70 people are in their hands. Fifteen minutes have passed since takeoff. Then the computerized brain of Aero Peru Flight 603 sends another burst of contradictory warnings. But a ratio. It can't be. Nothing's disconnecting. All engine instruments are okay. What can our real speed be? The speed indications are okay. Lima Tower provides their only chance of survival. We are observing you crossing the 260 of Lima at 31 miles west. Level is 10,700. Velocity is approximately 280 over the ground. Perfect. The controller's altitude reading is incorrect. Junk information being generated by the 757's computers and radioed to the tower. Over speed. The brakes are on. But now, another overspeed warning. Then the stall warning sounds. Let's descend. Can't be overspeed. We're still flying. They get a stall warning that the airplane is uh, falling out of the sky. At the same time, they got overspeed warning. Uh, impossible to have two contradictory uh, alarms. Either you're stalling or either you're uh, having an overspeed. So that created more confusion. Really, uh, this uh, problem has never happened before. It was a new emergency. In aviation, you always figure, what's going to kill me? <laughs> what is the critical thing? Let's take care of that first. And then um, we'll take care of the other lesser issues uh, later on. Uh, when you get a stall warning or when you get an overspeed indication, you need to pay attention to those immediately. In this case, they were getting both a stall warning and an overspeed. Well, which is right? First Officer David Fernandez finally realizes that the odds are against a safe landing. We request, is there any plane that can take off and rescue us? Acknowledged, rescue has been alerted. Any 
plane in the area to guide us. An Aero Peru that may be in the area. Anybody. Oh, don't say anything like that. Yes, because right now we are in a stall. The stick shaker vibrates violently, indicating that the 757 is going too slow and could fall from the sky. Aero Peru 603, we have a 707 that is leaving for Pudewell. We will advise him. We are not in a stall. It's a false alarm. Schreiber's airspeed indicator reads 350 knots, well above stall speed. No, we have stick shaker. It has to be. But even with speed brakes and everything, we're maintaining 9,500 feet. Why aren't we getting the same reading? When the airplane is slowed up to a, to a point in the air that it can no longer sustain itself in flight, um, it stalls. The wing stalls or stops flying. There's a warning system built into the airplane that tells the pilots when that's happening. It's known as a stick shaker, along with a voice warning, which we just heard. Uh, when the stick shaker goes off because the airplane has slowed down too much, you get a warning like this, where the control column is shaking and vibrating, along with the voice warning saying that the airplane is stalling. And of course, the pilots would go into the aircraft stall recovery procedure at that point. In the battle between man and machine, the deranged 757 is winning. The pilots have no sense of where they are or how high. They have gradually been descending, now to just 300 meters over the sea. Lima Tower, misguided by Aero Peru 603's incorrect transponder, reassures the pilots that they are at 10,000 feet. Aero Peru 603, you are now flying on course 120. We observe you to be at level 10,000. Your speed is approximately 220 and a distance from Lima of 33 miles to the northwest. The 707 will be ready in 15 minutes to fly west to help you. The pilots have failed in their attempt at a landing. The best hope now is that another aircraft can get airborne and guide the 757 back to the airport. To have another aircraft come alongside and formate, or you formate on it, would have, one, would have been one way of, of uh, recovering from this abnormal situation. However, we, we uh, must remember that the flight was at night in darkness. The pilots may or may not have had any formation flying training, but that would have been one way to resolve the problem quite, quite well, actually. What's happening? Too low to rain. Now the pilots receive the most terrifying warning of all. It is called the ground proximity alarm, meaning a collision with the earth is imminent. Still, the tower tells them they are at 10,000 feet. We have the terrain alarm and we're supposed to be at 10,000 feet. According to the monitor, you have 105. Too low to rain. There is no checklist for if you have these seven or eight warnings going off, which they did, and they couldn't shut them off. Uh, it's, it's, a very, it's a very rattling experience. I could play that tape for you and you hear those things, whoop, whoop, pull up, terrain, terrain, and, and all of these things going off and the stick shaker, brrrr. It, uh, it's a very unnerving uh, environment. All the computers are going crazy here. Schreiber turns the aircraft toward the sea away from a possible collision with a mountain or skyscraper. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. Despite the erroneous warnings, the terrain alarm is correct. There's a system on board the aircraft called the ground proximity warning system. And uh, it senses a rate of descent in the airplane. The irony of the situation was they were getting warnings from that saying, too low terrain, terrain too low. That probably, in all probability, was a true warning. But because they'd been subjected to so many warnings and ongoing false warnings, and horns, bells, and whistles, that they didn't really, I don't think, react to that uh, too, too seriously. Are we going down now? We have 370 knots. Are we descending now? We are showing the same speed. You have 200 knots speed, approximately. Speed 200 knots? 220 ground speed, reducing speed slightly. The pilots are stunned. 200 knots is precariously close to a stall speed. Damn, we're gonna stall right now. Let's go up, let's see, let's go up here. 
two Peruvian men grapple with a deadly situation. A computer that warns them of flying too fast, too slow, and too low all at once. Schreiber decides to risk a second attempt at landing, seeking the signal, known as the ILS, to guide the aircraft to the runway. I want to try to intercept the ILS. I'm trying to descend. Lima, Aero Peru 603. We will try to intercept the ILS. Let us know if we are in. Received, Aero Peru 603. You show now level 9700. Instruments seem to be working. For a moment, there is a glimmer of hope. This one's right. This one's okay, too. The air traffic controller attempts to raise the pilot's spirits with good news. Stand by to verify speed. The 707 is about to take off. It is on taxi. Confirm our speed. It is very important we do not have any speed indications on board. How can we be flying at this speed if we're descending with engines on idle? Give me the altitude, please. Yes, you are maintaining 9700 according to the scope, sir. 9700? Yes, correct. What is your indicated altitude? Do you have any visual reference? 9700, but it is indicating too low terrain. Are you sure you have us on the radar at 50 miles? Hey, look, with 370, we have 370 what? Do we lower gear? Aero Peru 603, Lima. What do we do with the gear? Suddenly, they realize the awful truth. We're hitting water! Pull it up! Climb! Climb, Aero Peru 603. If you need to, pull up! For 20 seconds, the pilots struggle for altitude. Lima. Aero Peru 603, Lima. The next morning, Mexican businessman Monas Albert learns that an Aero Peru flight has crashed. Five minutes after takeoff, the crew informed the tower that they were having an emergency and they requested clearance to return to Lima. During the process, contact with the aircraft was lost at 0110, with the latest position of the aircraft being 50 miles north of the city of Lima. About six o'clock in the morning, I got up and turned on the news channel, and I heard there was a, a crash, an airplane crash of Aero Peru, but the news mentioned New York to, to Lima. Rescue operations are underway by authorities. The aircraft was carrying 61 passengers and nine crew members. His brother-in-law and his business partner were on Aero Peru 603. So I went to the shower and didn't pay a lot of attention. But when I came out, they corrected uh, the news and they said from Lima to Santiago. And I knew in that plane, Kenny and Abraham were flying. The news was very vague, so they mentioned there might be some survivors, and they mentioned that the, the plane crashed on the Pacific Ocean, and, and they didn't have a lot of uh, news, and the crash was at night. So in my mind, I thought that the plane sort of landed on water, and, and most people got out. Guido Fernandez has just been appointed Peru's accident investigator. Aero Peru is his first case. The co-pilot, David Fernandez, is his nephew. I was in bed. It was 